Um, if you notice, how many of you are familiar with PageRank at least? We'll talk about it a little bit. Great, that's what I figured. We have a page rank of five on this page, but as you go through the site and click on different links, which is better, pick up. There we go. Uh, you'll notice that our page rank drops to four, which is typical. Your home page always gets the most precedent for what you're working on. And then all the pages that are linked from it, if they're linked properly, will also get a very significant portion. So for us, the way we developed our architecture from our home page is all of the most important pages are linked directly from the home page. And because we developed our navigation the way we did, every page you go on now has links back and forth to each one. So when you look at the example on the left, as you develop a hierarchy, if you can imagine, even if your site is totally search friendly, if you have a page rank of six on the home page, then it's a five on level one, more than likely. Now, this is, there's no absolutes in search. These things change. There's a lot of variables here. But for the sake of this conversation, if you have a page rank six on your home page, more than likely you're going to get a five or a four on your next page, a three or a two on the next. So if you start to put your site's important pages deeper and deeper down to where they're not properly linked from other pages easily, you are hurting your own ability to, to rank well. So as you develop an architecture, the way we've always done it is more how it's done on the right-hand side, which is not only is the home page linked to each one of these main pages, but our navigation was developed so that the red level one also links to all the others plus the home, and the green level one links to all the others plus that one. So that's how we went about developing our architecture, and that's how we consult with our clients every day on how to go about developing their architecture for search. Very often, when people are developing websites, search is one of the last things they're thinking about. And then they call on someone like us, or they try it themselves, and they, figure, they can't figure out why it's not working. And very often, it's because there's architectural issues with the way the site was developed. The best way to create more of a circular architecture are using dropdowns. Now, of course, if dropdowns don't work for you for a usability reason or something, that's fine. But from a search perspective, which is what we're here to discuss, Dropdowns are hands down one of the better ways to go about creating a circular architecture. Now, there's a caveat with that. It's, there's only like two ways to develop uh, a dropdown so that you get the maximum impact from all the search engines seeing the text and the links that are in them. Usually, you're going to uh, make sure that any of the important text or links are not in JavaScript. Search engines don't read JavaScript. They haven't for a very long time. So if you have a JavaScript-based dropdown, Google doesn't see any of it. They don't see it. So therefore, all those links that, sh that it should see, it's not going to see, OK? We uh, use dynamic HTML and CSS for a lot of our dropdowns. Uh, sitemaps. Sitemaps are critical, because if properly implemented, they're on every page of your site, OK? Now, let's think about how we go back to the architecture. Now you have a link on every page of your site that goes to a sitemap, which links out to every other important page. So all of your pages on your site are one page away from the sitemap. It's the, one of the easiest things you can do, other than redevelop your entire architecture, is put in a really strong, not overly optimized. Remember, the sitemap some people are going to go to as a useful tool for themselves. Nothing I hate more than a site that's just butchered for search and not for users. Because if no one can use the site, I don't care how high you rank, they're just going to hit the back button and go to the next person. So make sure that you keep that in mind as you're using some of these techniques. Always put your brand and conversions and what's best for your users above search. Always. There should never be a compromise. Other things like useful links in a section are also very helpful. If there's other popular products, you might want to list along with that. As long as the keywords are in the product name, it's also wise to link those over to other pages as well. And I have seen folks spend years trying to optimize their own site, and we sat down with them, and within five minutes, I'm like, well, this is the reason why you haven't gotten anything. And it usually has to do with their architecture or the implementation of their website, which we are about to get into right now. One of the biggest issues that I found that people, I can't believe development companies still develop sites like this. Are any of you in the middle of having a site developed? Okay. Anyone that's in the middle of having a site developed, listen up to this very closely and do not pay that final check without the team at least taking a look at this. Because if you ever want to optimize your site, you will be absolutely screwed and then you're going to have to go and get everything redone. Who wants to pay twice for work that your team may have, should have already known? So let's go out to some of my favorite sites. And I think you kind of get what I'm into in a little bit. All right, let's go to Bluefly. My internet's so slow. All right. <laughs> of course, you know, it's been fast all day. And now Bluefly, when it finished loading, I think has about a page rank of six or seven. And do you all see where the page rank is right here? 
I'm kind of rolling my mouse over it. Good. All right, it's still loading. And when it completes, it's like a six or a seven. The problem is every single link from here uses like a lot of question marks. Have you ever seen those URLs with a lot of question marks and equal signs and ampersands? Search engines hate that. They've always hated it, and there's easy ways around it during the development process that will keep that from being an issue. And Bluefly has not finished loading for some odd reason. But their home page is like a six. Every link, see how this link up top here has department JSP question mark folder percent sign? The search engines hate that. And it, to the point where this page, when it's done loading, will have a page rank of zero, even though it's linked directly from a home page that has a page rank of six. Okay. So what that means is if your URLs are structured in that way, good luck trying to get your site to rank well for competitive terms. Maybe for very uncompetitive terms, you might be okay. But for very competitive terms, that will kill you. Their page rank for this page is a two. Notice on our site, where we didn't have all the garbly book at the end, our home page was a five, and all of our other, all of our other pages were fours. This page was linked directly from their home page, and it went from a six down to a two. Let me give you another example. Assuming that this thing loads pretty fast. How many of you have those kind of sites where you're like, uh-oh, is that us? Yeah, you're not going to raise your hands, I know. <laughs> but it, if you're in the middle of developing a site, I cannot tell you enough. Now's the time to tell your team, look, there's two things that are not in my bookmark. So if you have a site like that, you may want to write this down. There's two very techy things that you don't need to know other than to tell them they need to implement it. If you are on a Linux or Unix-based platform and your sites are on that platform, they have to use something called Mod Rewrite. It's a small little plug and they can drop in and get rid of all that stuff so that your site's then search friendly. That's one. If you're on a Windows-based environment or IIS environment, it's something called the ISAPI Rewrite Module. It lets you rewrite all those URLs so Google also thinks they're all static instead of dynamic. So many of you have probably heard that Google doesn't like dynamic pages. It's true. So what you have to do is make your pages look like they're static. It's not a trick. Everybody does it. Amazon, who I worked for for a while, does it. Barnes & Noble, who I worked for for a while, doesn't. How many times have you done a search for a random product and Amazon's showing up in the top 10? A lot, right? How many of you have seen some kind of Amazon link somewhere there? How many of you have seen a Barnes & Noble link up there, other than when you're searching for Barnes & Noble? There's a reason for that, and it's because Amazon, from the beginning, developed their architecture to where all their URLs are formatted that way. Barnes & Noble didn't, and it takes so much effort to go back and redo it that they're missing out on traffic and sales every day because of one small thing. So if you're in the middle of getting a site developed or if you are about to get one developed, that's something that if search engines matter to you, your team should know about and should know how to implement. Yes, we have a question. Here's why. Uh, usually for us, we'll charge somebody five grand to do a search architecture audit, okay? We wouldn't need to do that architecture audit if your team had it built it right in the first place. And then, now somebody's got to go back and fix it. You've already paid that last check. They're like, oh, it's going to cost you this much for us to do this. Now they're learning on your dime for something they're going to apply to the rest of their customers, and you, foot that, you footed that bill. I don't think it's fair. And if your team is like great pro at programming and not great at search, bring someone in, or now you know. you know. If you don't know the industry details of this, bring someone in to sit down with them for five hours. Most of the teams that I've sat down with, they get this within five hours. We sit down with our tech team, their tech team, and they're like, oh, so that's all we gotta do? Yeah, that's all you gotta do, it's really simple. 